Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is January the 3rd, 2023, and we are continuing our study, our look into the Lunar Sabbath. In this video, we're going to be discussing that the Lunar Sabbath ignores the Passover Sabbath, the memorial of our Savior. And this, um, this fits with the previous video where I pointed out that now this is this in my opinion <laughs> the Sabbath even if the lunar Sabbath were real let's say they were right about the the monthly Sabbath even if it were real in my opinion because the Lord set forth the weekly Sabbath as an example him himself resting on the weekly Sabbath putting it in the Ten Commandments, um, resting on the Sabbath in death. All of these things put forth the Sabbath as superior to the monthly Sabbath, even if the monthly Sabbath were real. Okay? That was my argument, in my opinion, though. I can't prove that it would be more uh, respectable, but... I believe that the Bible has put forth enough examples of how important it is to God to where it should be given the proper respect. So I did the video. Here, this is kind of similar, but this is doctrinal. This not only is a memorial to our Lord and Savior, but there's, there's, there's scriptural support to why this day should be respected. Okay, but let's go ahead and take a look. And by the way, not all of the lunar Sabbatarians put the monthly Sabbath over the over the weekly Sabbath, okay? <laughs> because it wasn't really an argument against the monthly Sabbath as much as I'm speaking of the previous video now. As much as it was I didn't like the fact that they put the monthly Sabbath over the weekly Sabbath when God himself ordained and set it forth as an example. It, so anyway, let's go ahead and get through this. One of the primary reasons for the support of a monthly Sabbath is the repeated mention of the new moon in correlation to the weekly Sabbath. This, of course, does not prove a monthly Sabbath. However, logically, it does produce a strong argument. I acknowledge the multiple occurrences is something that warrants an investigation. I simply come to a different conclusion about the occurrences. The lunar Sabbatarians see the multiple occurrences of new moon and have no problem reading, reading the logic into the scriptures concerning their truth. However, when asked to fairly review the other scriptures, a wall must be placed up in order to protect the lunar Sabbath against conflicting scriptures. I'm speaking of the Passover. One of the key scriptures in the lunar Sabbath is Leviticus 23 verse 3. They say the Sabbath is listed as a mo. It's not Moadim, Deem. Hold on. I'm not sure why I put that word in there. But let's go to Leviticus 23. It's Moed. Moed. M O E. Moed. I got this from someone, and so I've been using it, but it's, it, it doesn't check out, and I just realized it. So, <laughs> one of the key scriptures is the Lunar Sabbath. In the Lunar Sabbath is Leviticus 23, verse 3. They say the Sabbath is listed as a moed. A moed is a festival and must therefore be established by the new moon. This is kind of correct. It is only the way that they insist on it being defined that it is the, that creates a problem. And the Bible says all days are defined by the sun and the moon. However, the lunar Sabbatarians insist that there must be a unique sign given for the week, similar to the month and the year. This is not true. This is not what Genesis says. Genesis says the only unique signs are for seasons, days, and years. We're going to get to that in a moment. Let's read Leviticus 23 3 first. We'll start at 2. Speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them, 
concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Even these are my feasts. The word here is Moed. And then it lists the Sabbath under the first feast. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work wherein therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So they're proclaiming they're they're proclaiming the holy convocations. And the holy convocations are his feasts. And so this is listed under there. So they insist this is a feast. And all feasts must be deci must be defined both by the sun and the moon. They get that from Genesis 114. Let's finish reading first. This is not what Genesis says. Genesis says the only unique signs are for seasons, days, and years. Explain the definition of a season, day, and year according to Genesis. Um, hold on. Let me put a little bit of a correction in here. When I read this before in one of my videos a couple of days ago, I think, I mentioned that the sign might be a week. I got this one from one of the Lunar Sabbatarians videos. This is not correct. It's just a sign for the, it's the sign to show you the Sabbath. I'll, I'll, well, let's read through this and I'll tell you. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. We're going to read through this carefully. He said, let there be lights in the firmament. We know from the next couple of verses that the lights are the sun and the moon. Two great light. Well, we know this is the sun and the moon. But there's two great lights, the sun and the moon, in the firmament of heaven. And what they do is they divide the day from the night. Because a day is an evening and a morning. Okay? But the evening, the morning slides into the evening. The evening slides into the morning. You really don't know when it's evening or morning unless you're specifically looking and have memorized certain events but you can't be specific right the point is well you can measure it and be specific you can stick a stick in the ground and look at the sun or you can calculate it etc etc there's ways to know specifically however the lay person isn't just going to be able to know automatically just by looking up at the sky Okay, so let's let's go through this slowly. And God said, "Let there be for lights. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, to divide the light from the darkness. And let these be the for signs and for seasons, the light and the darkness, the sun and the moon. Those are the signs: the sun and the moon." Or signs the day and the night are signs you can you can change this with Sun and the moons that's what I'm trying to get through to you it, it, it doesn't it, the Sun and the moon aren't mentioned nobody cares about the Sun nobody cares about the moon not for this purpose right here we know it's the Sun and the moon but it says the day and the night okay you're using the day and the night as a sign for the seasons for the days and for the years. That's what it says. Okay, let's go back so that I can explain better. <laughs> there is no unique sign given for the week or for the month because they're not listed. For example, there's no unique sign given for the festival days, even though they are holy convocations. They are dependent on the original sign that was given. The original sign would be the moon. I'm going to go into more of that later. I'm just making it easy for you to understand so we're going by steps. The moon isn't a sign, but I'm just saying it is here for because we're going by steps. So if you take the new moon and that is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then you count seven days later, then you have the um, the Holy Convocation. So the Holy Convocation of the Feast Day there's no sign in the sun or the moon for that. But it's still a holy day. I mean, there's no unique sign is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, I explained it more down here. So let's read on. 
Given this information, the logical conclusion is that seasons, days, and years are defined by evenings and mornings in combination with days and nights. And these are used to define other events. For example, the evening and the morning defines the day. The day consists of light and dark. There cannot be a unique sign to define a month because it is not listed. You must use one of the previous listed terms to define it. We use day and year to define the month. We use the day or night of the full moon, which is an evening and a morning. It's not a day and a night. We only use the day and the night in order to help define them as a sign. It's just a sign. The evening and the morning defines the day. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> we use <laughs> day and year to define the month. We use the day or night of the full moon and whether the year consists of 12 or 13 months in order to define the months. Now, if you don't use 12 or 13 months, if you just keep counting them, then this probably won't work with you. <laughs> that example probably doesn't hold, hold water with you. But for most of us, we use the longest day of the year in order to help define the um, the year. And so the month cannot be properly defined without the year being defined first. So you see, month cannot be listed. Listed, He couldn't list month. Otherwise, the month would be used to define the year instead of the day of the new moon after the day of the full equinox of the fall equinox. Likewise with the week. The week cannot be used to define anything. <laughs> it can be used as a starting point. Only as a starting point for counting to get to the next holy convocation or to whatever day you want. It has to be used as a starting point. Um, it's just a week. It consists of seven days. Days are defined. It's a term that's previously defined in Genesis. There's this whole thing about having unique starting points for the week, the month. All of this is unfounded. All of this has come because they see a perfectly logical, a perfectly logical assumption. They have a perfectly logical assumption to investigate all of these new moons that are listed in the Bible. They're right about that. They were absolutely right. They were completely justified. I've not ever tried to take that from them. But they ignore so much in order to uphold it. So much had to be sacrificed. And in the process, they sacrificed God. They sacrificed the Passover. Moses was told in Exodus 12 verse 2 to look up at the sky to discern the yearly festival, specifically the Passover. They had already been keeping the Sabbath at that time. It was the Passover festival that required the introduction of the new year and thus the annual feast. Let's look at Exodus 12 2. This month now, we have to keep in mind here. We have to draw the picture. They changed the days, okay? They changed the date to the 15th. So, in order to uphold the uh, in, in order to uphold the correct days, they had to change the the scriptures as well. Okay? So they did the best that they could. But it's not perfect, of course, but it's not perfect because we needed to be able to unravel it at a later time. So, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. This month is new moon. This new moon shall be unto you the beginning of months. He had to have been looking at the new moon at that time. Right? So... He wasn't looking at it, of course. He was telling you this upcoming new moon is going to be unto you the beginning of months. But he would have still had to known what the sky looked like. All right. This shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. 
Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. In Exodus 12, 2 is where the annual feast begin to be defined. The Passover spawned the introduction of the annual feast, pronouncing it as a memorial to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Exodus 12, 14. And this day shall be unto you, speaking of the Passover, a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days ye shall... Well, this is the unleavened bread. We'll move on. Pronouncing it as a memorial to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Exodus 12, 14. However, when the Passover is listed in Leviticus 23, just two verses after the lunar Sabbath's key, key scripture... Describing the Sabbath as a Moed and a holy convocation, it is conveniently overlooked. Let's go to Leviticus 23. Now I've already read you this. Nowhere in this writing does it say that this is a feast. We know that the Sabbath was created at creation. It's in Genesis 2. Genesis 1 are the first six days. The Sabbath is in it's the seventh day as listed in Genesis 2. It's separated here from all of the it's separated here first from all of the other feasts because of its importance. Then they begin to introduce the feasts and they start all over. These are the feasts of the Lord, even the holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. It says up here, you shall proclaim these to be holy convocations. It doesn't say anything about proclaiming them in their seasons. Well, it feast is used as feast. So it's the same thing. But it's used as seasons here. <laughs> these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Two verses later, it's introduced up here, it's reintroduced down here. They ignore it because it conflicts with their doctrine. And it's a memorial to their God. The Passover spawned the introduction. Hold on. Um, however, when the Passover is listed in Leviticus 23, just two verses after the Lunar Sabbath key scripture described, describing the Sabbath as a moed and a holy convocation, it is conveniently overlooked. It is overlooked in order to uphold the doctrine that Lunar Sabbath days can only be on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. The Passover falls on the 14th day of the month. Therefore, to acknowledge it is to undo their own doctrine, denying Jesus his rightful honor and his memorial. At this point it's just unfair. It's just unfair. It's unfair in the previous video that I did where it defiles the name of God by putting the book and all of them don't do that, thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm so and I have to point that out because it's important. It's important. And then here it denies the memorial of the Savior. It just all right. That's all I have to say. I will talk to you in the next video.